Welcome to the show. Yo, we hope yo, you yo, have yo, a blast. Thanks for making time for the Dealer Talk Podcast. Another business leader, here's a penny for your thoughts. This ain't no regular conversation, baby. This that Dealer Talk. Yeah. What up? Welcome to another episode of the Dealer Talk Podcast. This is your host, Herb Anderson. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about acquisition. I'm going to be showing you guys a really cool alternative to some of the solutions that are out there. So I'm super, super excited to have this conversation and share some insights with all of you amazing people in the automotive industry. So let's just jump right into it. Without further ado, today our guest is one of the founders of VinQ, Mr. Danny Saslavsky. Did I get that right? Well done. Well done, man. All right. Cool, Love man. It. Dude, thank you so much for doing this. Super excited to have you on. Um, I typically kick things off with a with a with a little bit of a background. So tell us about you, man. So are we going way back? Yeah, man. The, the whole story. Dude. <laughs> okay. Uh, my I'm a first generation uh, Russian Jewish American kid. So my parents came here from Ukraine in '79, and uh, I was born in '83. But uh, Russian, believe it or not, it's my first language. So I, I didn't speak English until I was like seven. I learned it in school and then uh, grew up. My dad came over. He was a he was a cobbler. He fixed shoes for a living. And my mom went and worked for a uh, clothing factory. But um, wow. the him being a cobbler actually kind of is, believe it or not, what got us in the car business. So we had a uh, uh, he had a uh, shoe repair business at the bottom of this hill on Johnson Drive in Kansas City. And at the top of Johnson Drive was this very small car dealership named Country Hill Motors. And my dad always had a fascination with cars. And so he walked up the street one day because he saw a Mustang up there he always dreamed of having. And uh, the guy at the time only had about 10 cars on the lot and said, hey, I want to negotiate buying that car. And they became fast friends. And uh, uh, he bought the car, but then said, hey, can I come here and sell cars part time? Because my dad had just hired his first employee at the shoe repair business. So he had some extra time. So my dad came up and uh, started selling cars and eventually became business partners with Josh. And, and back then, this was in the early 80s, they quickly figured out that uh, uh, selling wasn't the problem, buying was the problem. Like if you buy it right, right, you kind of solve the, sol the, the selling problem. So uh, we had some cool things happen because Josh, my dad's business partner, had some money. And so we had a little access to start getting inventory. So my dad had this idea that uh, he bought some Nextel phones, like pagers, and he went out and passed it around to a couple of new car dealerships. And he said, hey, when you're bidding a car, page me, and I'll tell you what it's worth, and then I'll come buy it. And this is the days of right black oh. ones, like in your pockets. And so my dad uh, was getting, I remember as a kid, was getting pages all day long of saying, you know, hey, what's this car worth? My dad would bid it. And then we come in and early on we called it WAR, Wholesale Auction Retail, W-A-R. And so we bought everything. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if it was too expensive for us, we'd wholesale it. If it was uh, not good enough to sell in the lot, we'd auction it. And if it was retailable, we'd retail it. Uh, retail it. So that's that's kind of how we uh, cut our teeth on acquisition and were innovative, you know, back in the eighties and nineties. Um, and then I joined up when I was 14 years old. So that was uh, the beginning for me. Very cool, man. I love that. I love those stories of, you know, just starting out in the lot and working your way up. There's so many of those, my, you know, mine included, like, you know, I was a, um, tire tech and, um, loop technician and work my way up to service and then management and all these things. So um, I think it's, it's a cool testament to the industry. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so I love that. I love, I, so there's so many things that I like about, um, you know, when we did, when we did the demo uh, for one of the stores that I consult with and um, I started learning about your company and your, and your, and your solutions and stuff, I was like super impressed, man. And then when the opportunity came for us to do this deal, I was like, dude, this is great. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, different things here. Um, and let's start with what you just, what you said right now, that caught my ear. You talked about you guys bought everything. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to explore that because that's, I don't know, dude, maybe that's a, it's a, um, 
it's it's I don't know how to say this. It's pr- maybe not an easy concept to digest, but to me, it makes sense, dude. Like if you bought every single car that you had the opportunity to buy, no matter you know if you're in it for a couple hundred bucks or you're in it for you know ten grand, I just feel like ultimately you're going to win more. And I think that a lot of dealers don't have that mentality, don't have that philosophy. And my question to you, man, is why? Why do you think that is? Or do you think that that's really you know, when you say that, is that an exaggeration or you guys actually did that? And if you did, you must believe in it. And so why is it that the majority of dealers are just trying to pick these trades and just get these, these you know, deals where they can make all this money and then they miss the opportunity of really becoming a, a genuine buying center in their communities? Yeah. So so I'm going to first talk about what, what we do and then because I don't, I don't like being told what to do. So um, so I'm going to talk about me first and then we can, talk, <laughs> right on. we can talk about, right? so I don't want to be like, you uh, should be doing this. Uh, yeah, that's super dope. Man. <laughs> uh, no. So we, uh, first of all, are in an independent car dealership, right? So I don't have a flag to fly. So I don't have a truck showing up with inventory. That's number one. So just that problem by itself, uh, you've got to think differently, right? That's number sure. one. Number two, um, we, solved our acquisition problem early on by figuring out that if we didn't buy it, somebody would. And somebody's buying it, not because they're doing, you know, their mother Teresa of the car business, they're buying it because they can make money. So why couldn't we be innovative and figure out these channels in order to uh, A, acquisition and B, sales. And so what I created uh, years ago was concurrent teams. We have a wholesale team and a retail team at Country Hill where the wholesale team, uh, uh, once the vehicle is identified as wholesale, they take over, they get the car ready for wholesale. They have the wholesale relationships to understand which vehicles are gonna do best at which uh, uh, you know vehicle sales channel, whether it be ACV or, or Mannheim, or whether it be uh, even like a, a scrapper yard or an LKQ. Uh, we, we figured out these channels and you start to build either data points up here or in a system, right? And then once you kind of have those, it's no different than building muscle at the gym. All of a sudden, you know, you graduate from picking up 25s to picking up 35s and 45s, right. and 55. It's, it's the same concept. You you get to learn, you grow. So um, we always had the attitude that wholesale would be profitable. We never had the attitude that um, if you're making money in wholesale, then you're probably leaving money on the table. Mm-mm, not in our world. So, and, and again, that's because we are uh, focused on the total profit and loss, not just on a segment of it. And so, and it came in it, like many good things, it was born out of a pain, right? We had to solve acquisition. We couldn't afford getting into the new car business. We also made a decision a long time ago that we would never have a floor plan. And that decision caused us to grow slower but um, we to this day do not have a floor plan and we don't owe anything on our building or, or on our other properties. Um, and so that also forces us to decision differently when thinking about churn and what inventory goes where and when we exit out of it and so forth. Right on. So um, just bottom line, man, do you feel that y- if you did buy, do you think that there's a restriction just because you have a, a manufacturer attached to your to your building, or do you think that you know you would you would ultimately win more if you did have that mentality of buy every single car, no matter you would win more if you bought every single car. Period. Right. There would be pain yeah. in the beginning, but you would you would absolutely win more. And in today, um, well, number one, COVID has I think woken us up to that idea, and we're mm-hmm. we're out of pain figuring that out. But we also have a common competitor, right? Like the whole industry has a common yeah, competitor, sure. set of common competitors. And if yeah. we don't buy it, somebody else will. They're, yeah, exactly. So, okay. So along those lines, right? If we if we are going to adopt the philosophy that we can win by buying more cars, another area of, of deficiency, for lack of a better term, that I see within the dealer when it comes to this process is that they that they don't have teams dedicated to buying cars, mm-hmm. right? It's just, it's another task for the BDC agent. It's another task for the salesperson, right? You know, a, a lot of cars or a lot of, a lot of stores don't have their dedicated buyers that are 100% incentivized just to buy cars. Yeah. That are, 
that are managed by one one central manager that his whole uh you know um pay plan and compensation is based on on, on acquiring vehicles mm -hmm. so um do you think that that's the the that's something that can be improved on and if so how would you how would you set that up yes easy absolutely if you call my store right now what uh the way they answer is are you calling about buying a car or are you calling calling about selling a car okay that should tell you enough about the culture and the mentality that uh, we want and i was actually just talking to darren our vehicle buying manager two hours ago this uh, this morning in person and uh, we were talking about the idea of scarcity meaning what if because there's like 19 dealerships around me right uh, everything from highline to to chrysler dodge jeep and a hyundai store and and uh, they're building a new genesis store and so if every one of those guys had buying centers we would still be okay because guess what they all have selling centers they right. all manage to sell cars and we still hit records and so absolutely um uh the there is enough cars to buy but you know this we're in an inventory based opportunity industry so he or she who has the inventory wins right and and so yes you have to buy you have to do it we started with one person um and this was seven years ago again born out of a pain my dad had a stroke and he was our predominant buyer and i didn't like going to the auctions but uh, when he had a stroke i didn't have another choice and i always felt stupid going to the auction because i'd be you know last guy with my hand up paying the most transportation fees post-sale inspection fees auction fees and then on top of that always 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 out of every batch there'd be um, a number of cars that i'd be like shoot i gotta spend more on recon than i thought i had to every time and i felt rushed i never got the cars i wanted so i said there's got to be a better way so i hired um darren who's still with me today and we shook hands and we said hey we're going to figure out how to buy 30 cars a month from the public and we we essentially duct taped it together we started identifying <laughs> these channels of where to go um like here are the here are the places they are and then we started making excel spreadsheets of of how to track this stuff and then one of the biggest epiphanies we had is when we started tracking the results and and this is dare i use the word sexy because i i think this <laughs> <laughs> i think this is sexy i do like i think this is the stuff that gets me excited we um we looked at of the cars we're buying um when they sell what's the average age front gross per copy back gross for uh, per copy and then segment right like do they come from the auction Do they come from uh trade did they come from vehicle buying center did they come from dealer network meaning i bought it from another dealer and and we started watching all those metrics and then we also watched the cars that we had in stock so how old were they on average what was our average investment uh what was the average lead volume and it, it started to become crystal clear. And we're like, all right, um, chicken and the egg here. Do we build a mm -hmm. vehicle buying center or you know, do we buy from the auction? The, the answer was clear. We needed to start focusing on buying more from the public and finding efficiencies to do that. And it's like anything, you, you start down a path, you're just gonna walk towards it when it makes sense. And you're gonna make right. discoveries along the way. So, so um, and I'm, I'm not a, um, for me, it doesn't need to be perfect for it to work. We'll, we're going to con continuously work towards uh, making it perfect. Right on. So, um, okay, so you guys said, this is what we're going to do. This is the goal. We're going to start this. You kind of got going, and then you obviously learned, learned in the process. Did you find that you had, because there's obviously resistance from the customers, right? They feel like they're at a disadvantage when they sell to the to dealers or they're going to get taken advantage of and all these things. Um, did you find that you, that because you, you guys are not using any, any, any uh, third party validation, right? Like a KBB ICO or anything like that. Do you have any of those processes in place where you guys are straight up um, country hill buying center, uh, personal you know it's it's your own brand yeah no right? it's, it's our own brand um so th so that kbb is it, now today with all the knowledge that i have uh of you know to this point because there's still so much to learn but of this uh, to this point of this of private party acquisition so uh kbb and there's others that do it too we consider that a third party opportunity 
that is not the pro we don't depend on those opportunities. There's actually right. five lanes that we know of as of right now inbound, which is where we say to the world, hey, we buy cars um, when people call, right? Uh, and we give them a, a, a place to go, selltocountryhill.com. Just go to selltocountryhill.com, give us your info, we'll give you an offer, and we'll have a, a, a good conversation. That's inbound. We get a lot of those, and they and they close at a high clip because those are people that are coming to us saying, hey, I want to sell right. my car. Yeah. Um, and then the, the second one is outbound. So that's when we actually go out to the world and say, okay, cool. Here's your cars on Facebook or Craigslist or eBay or Auto Trader or whatever. And we start looking at, cool, these people are selling their cars. Let's reach out to them, have meaningful conversations about them and, and, and buy them. And when I say meaningful, it's not like, uh, hey, Herb, I saw your car online. Is it still available? <laughs> That's not a meaningful right, yeah. conversation, right? <laughs> uh, we, we truly want to have meaningful conversations about the car because we don't want to waste their time. And, and our people are on payroll and on commission. We don't want to waste our time. We really want to buy, we're calling because we want to buy the car. Um, so that's two. The third one is third party, which I talked to KBB is one of them. Um, Cars.com used to have one. Um, there'll be more, I'm sure. Yeah, there, sure, that. yeah. Um, but, and so that's third party. Uh, the, first one, the fourth one is service drive. Uh, we have service drive mm -hmm. um, and we started making offers to consumers right in the lane. And then we figured out, how about we just give them a QR code to scan and either automatically produce the offer because we've pre-programmed it or give them the ability to go to the sell to page and put in their info and they always know where they're at on value. And can, keep in mind, we control the data it spits out, right? Sure. Um, yeah. So that's the fourth one. And then the fifth one is a private party that converts to trade because uh, we, we figured out that about 15% of all people that are selling their car when we just ask them her why are you selling your car and and you'll say well i don't need a truck anymore and you go, okay cool well what are you what are you gonna do to get around and they say well i'm trying to figure it out right now and we, we go cool let's let's talk about it and and that's a it's a meaningful it's not a would you like to trade herb <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I laugh because I just had this conversation. It's like, dude, w you're going to win more, man, if you just focus on the acquisition. Because what are those people going to do? Are they going to leave your dealership in a horse? Like, dude, they need a car, man. They need a car. Just ask, ask. So. Come on. It's such a okay. So I like that. I like the 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 that broken down process. But you yourself, you, I guess what, what what I'm trying to get at is because a lot of people, a, a lot of dealers, I feel like they have these resistant to promote it because they've already given up, right? They're like, well, customers don't trust us. So I'm not going to focus on buying cars. I'm just going to focus on buying cars that are make sense for me, right? Um, can you do this? Can this be done without having to say, well, I need validation from a third party. I can just, I can create this myself. You can, you know what I mean? I can create the brand myself within my local community. And I think the, the what a lot of dealers miss and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that they, the first, they don't think about, uh, they don't think them, they don't think of themselves as a buying center. They think about themselves as we're just selling cars, and if we get trades or if somebody just happens to come in, then great, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, hopefully we'll get a couple of those. Um, and then the other thing is that they don't have the structure internally in their dealership, or that even to go further, they don't have that culture shift of, hey, listen, if we buy more cars, if we just focus on buying more cars, ultimately we're going to win more. I mean, do you agree? I mean, absolutely. Because, I, like, I mean, come, going back to my roots, if you buy it right, selling is not a problem. Period. So, just, I mean, you can sell the car. There is a tremendous need. You could always wholesale the car. Um, it's just a matter of time and attention. And the uh, I, you, I, I made the mistake, Herb. This is like I did this. I told salespeople, "Hey, I'll pay you two hundred dollars commission if you buy a car." Mistake. Um, I told sales managers, focus on acquisition from the private, from the public mistake because it diverts their attention. Um, they cannot focus that you can't, it's, it's, it's push and pull, right? Yin and yang. Right. You got to have acquisition deserves a full-time person and eventually a full-time team. team. No difference than sales does, right? You wouldn't tell your, uh, salespeople to focus on sales and service at the same time. Like, right. You know, it just, it doesn't work. It deserves a full-time person and or team, especially if you want the numbers. I mean, we're, um, 
the net lift for us was over two hundred thousand dollars a month in profit from from going to that that from philosophy. leaving the auction and going to private. Now, let me ask you this: How much? And I don't know if you can put this in dollars. If you could, that that would be amazing. Or maybe you you just did. But uh, when you said that, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna commit. How much of that became, or how much now do you do you spend time at the auctions and stuff versus uh, just getting you know just people now know that you guys are a buying center that you probably have your brand locally pretty much established and now people just come to you when they're trying to dispose of a vehicle just because you know you've been doing it successfully for for a, a period of lengthy amount of time. Yeah. Uh, so we we sell about two. Uh, between 150 and 200 retail a month and another 200 wholesale a month. So we're selling between three and 400 cars a month. Um, and so it's, it's, that's, that's a, for an independent, that's a very exciting number for us. Yeah. And sure. the, uh, and we're still having to buy about, uh, I'd say 40% of our retail inventory through, uh, uh, either auction or dealer network. We're growing our vehicle buying center, and this is actually kind of uh, walks into the topic of like, how do you grow? We figured out that there's a essentially like a customer acquisition cost for private party, and I'll kind of explain it. So just like a salesperson, when you have a dedicated vehicle buying center agent, they can buy between 20 and 30 cars a month. You'll have those oddballs that are just you know savants buying 40 cars a month but it's not the norm. We're lucky enough to have one of those fonts on our team, uh, but most of the time they're buying 20 to 30. So if you wanna to scale to over 100 or 200, you just need to scale your team. Um, assuming that the, you have the, the population density to go after the vehicles, uh, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is a personal friend of mine, uh, Rob Ruth in Dillsburg, Pennsylvania has, he's in a population of like 4,000. He's now, he's buying over 100 a month. Uh, but he's now trying to figure out how he how to penetrate the Philadelphia market and buy sight unseen and, and ship those cars. And that cost, when we run a PL, a profit loss statement for the entire team that includes payroll, any advertising, and software costs, is about $250 per acquisition. Make sense? If I'm yeah. got four mm -hmm. people running about $25,000. In the department yeah. buying 100 cars, it's about 20, uh, $250 uh, per for my customer acquisition costs. And um, which 250 versus and, and, and uh, versus paying the auction fees. Well, yeah, all those fees I just measured. But the one fee that I didn't talk about is the stupid tax. Raise your hand, expert tax fee, right? Oh. You're literally <laughs> competing. You start out with a dealer trying to sell you a car for the most he, can, he or she can get. And then you got if you're lucky, five other guys competing in raising that number. So you're, you're not doing that with an individual. So you, there's all this, um, uh, there's all this more opportunity that exists, not to mention you get to pre-negotiate reconditioning because you have time with the car. You can talk about it. Sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense, man. So, so, you know, like you said, like you, you build your whole team just like you would sales for the acquisition side and little by little it starts to it starts to pay for itself not to mention sure. that you're winning more you're spending less time at the auction you save all the fees the cars are better i would assume that the that the, those vehicles are in a little bit better condition would you say that that's another advantage too when you buy them straight from the public that so yeah. it saves you on on that end as well yeah and then obviously you get to hopefully sell a, a few of those folks into buying one of your your vehicles we do yeah. Yeah. So no, dude, I love it. And I want to talk about kind of where we are today, because obviously this is a different situation. And I wanted to get your take on, on that and what you guys have done to kind of stay competitive and how your, how you being a buying center already has benefited you. Cause I'm sure it has, but before we do that, you said something earlier and you said something in the demo that we did a couple of weeks ago that I wanted to explore. And that's the acronym war. Like, can you tell me a little bit about a, a little bit more about that? I'm I'm very curious about that 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 philosophy and what that stands for, and you know, how do you guys kind of leverage that? Yeah. So today, I believe that 
this is the first time, at least in my lifetime, that uh, automotive dealers can come together uh, against a common competitor. Right? We're, we're uh, we are compete. We're in a race now. There have been companies that have come in and have worked made offers to us and saying, hey, let us white label your inventory. We'll put it up online. And when the customer buys it, we'll send them to you. And then you get to sell a car. Sounds nice in theory, but all of a sudden now we are just dealers are just warehouses for inventory and we're losing our souls, our personalities, our, our businesses. So the uh, I'm, I'm uh, automotive through and through. And so my vision and mission is to uh, help dealers stay in business, including myself. And I think we do that through doing good business on the ground, obviously, but you have to have the inventory in order to uh, survive, right? So war is is just that. We are we are at this really cool uh, t- uh, space and time where we can we can go to war and uh, fight for the inventory, fight for um, making sure that our acquisition channels are built from the ground up, just like we did our sales departments and our service departments. We worked to build our service department customer uh, customer pay, right? Uh, we worked to build our sales uh, brand and uh, we, we fought for that. We have to do the same thing with acquisition. That's what I mean when I say war. Um, digital retailing is certainly something that's now been around for a few years and, and many of us are starting to get comfortable with using, if not all of it, but aspects of it. But what's now uh, going to, you watch, what, what will emerge and we hope to be on the front of that uh, is digital acquisition. So then um, again, you can use that war mentality to go, go fight for consumers inventory, even if it's not in your own backyard. Because Herb, you know this, um, you're, um, in Utah, I'm in Kansas City. There are cars in both of our markets, right? That um, uh, that Carvana has put on into them that don't exist in our markets. Like I can't go right. and touch them. I can't feel them. Um, I don't have that opportunity. Um, I'm not big enough to put my cars across the entire country. So I'm now competing um, with Phantom cars. So in order to win, again, I have to have the inventory. So digital acquisition and having the tools to do that, you, you got to you, this is this is a game of war and, and you got to you got to go fight for it. Now, more than ever, businesses need more efficient sales. That's why thousands of dealerships trust Four Eyes to help with things like automated inventory email updates and ensuring all of your leads get into the CRM. To try Four Eyes for free, visit foureyes.io slash dealer talk. That's foureyes.io slash dealer talk. Yeah, dude, I love that. I think that's super dope. And, I, you know, thanks so much for elaborating on that because I totally agree with that, with that philosophy, especially, you know, I mean, you touched on digital retailing and that's one of my biggest pet peeves because we, we don't, it's not, it's not a fully cooked idea yeah but i do feel that you know it's the future you know and definitely can't can't you know be blinded to that and and acquisition is obviously a big part of it i i see in my commute um and i just learned this recently but i guess utah is the biggest market for carvana and um i see that in my commute every day and it drives me insane dude i see Uh 10 or 20 transporters every single week and you know obviously I, i hate that so um yeah that's that's cool man all right so let's talk about uh, so the two things just for the listeners out there we're gonna we're gonna switch gears gears here in a minute so if you're listening to this what you want to do is you want to go to the um video portion of this on youtube in a little bit and i'll tell you guys when so you can actually see we're going to demo a a solution here that i i I really feel it's going to be something of 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 interest to to you guys and you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of value from it so definitely when the time comes make sure you you catch that portion on my youtube channel but um before we do that let's talk about the current situation dude because obviously you guys are experts at, at buying cars you have this this whole um philosophy i feel or or system rather down um, you know, it's 
you know, you got it pretty well thought out. It's obviously delivering results, but these are different times, right? And with different times come, you know, different results. And I'm sure you you guys have had to get creative as well. And just tell us a little bit about that. And if if your your setup has helped you win more, is it something that you've had to adjust because of the current situation? Like, um, give us a little bit on that. Yeah. So you talk about more like what? How do we appraise a car? What's the tech? Like, what do we look at? What tools do we have? No, like now, like given the shortage and everything. Oh, like how, yeah, of course. You know? So, yeah, so there's a combination answer there. So with the shortage, um, uh, let me first say I don't have a shortage. Um, we have uh, I, okay. at, at, <laughs> so at Country Hill, uh, I'm landlocked. So if you looked at my business from a Google map, uh, here's me literally across the street is CarMax. Behind me <laughs> is a brand new Audi store. Uh, which I have a funny Carmack story, story for you. They planted a lot of trees to block me out, but it's not working. So, uh, <laughs> they really did. Uh, but they have a pond and you can't plant trees in a pond apparently. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, and then across the street for me is a Mercedes Jag Land Rover dealership. And then, and then you have a whole row of Hendrick stores, Chevy, Toyota, Infinity and so forth. So, and then there's me. Um, and, I, I see the shortage. I see the shortage, right? Because we're waiting. We're like hoping and praying. Is the transport truck going to come in? Um, is uh, is you know factories telling me that I'm going to get cars? All that kind of stuff. And and no different than we talk to salespeople. Is you know how are you going to hit uh, your number other than a hope and a dream? How are we going to get uh, our our inventory more than a hope and a dream? So years ago, like a decade ago, we we all I think whether we saw it or not started feeling a pinch with. Uh, uh, gross, right? Our grosses sure. started going down. Commoditization, right? COVID has obviously taken away a little bit of that, but that's that is going to come back. Mark my words. Um, sure. And in the way to solve that is to uh, number one, start paying attention to your acquisition, but B, start looking at the date, the data on the screen differently. So one of the things we started doing differently when appraising cars, especially in this environment, is instead of, my dad walked around with a black book for years. Eventually that changed, right? Um, he then uh, started to look like MMR transactions, lived and died by MMR. Tra I don't like MMR transactions. I think it's a lagging indicator and I think they're inflated prices because you got a bunch of experts bidding on cars. Doesn't make right. sense to me to look at MMR transactions. So we started looking at, and we have this in VinQ, retail sold transactions, meaning what are these cars leaving the internet for? So they go online, um, you know, pick a car, 2016 Toyota 4Runner, 50,000 miles, went online on this day, left online on this day. What was that price drop of that car or that or average of that car within that segment class or price range? Um, and those, that is what dictates but how wait, these cars. Sorry to interject here, but I got a question on that. So. Yeah. But you don't know that that car sold, so there's there's a little bit of a, a um, educated guess, is what, what, what you know, with that. Because how do you know that that car just because it came off the site doesn't necessarily mean it transacted? So the how does that 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 should have an impact on that? On we, that do, value? we do know that it transacted. So um, so that so we so within VinQ we track uh, when the vehicle goes live, goes live and goes off. And then if it comes back on, it's considered meaning if it's, if it shows up in a wholesale, um, arena, like a Mannheim and Odessa and OVE or whatever, we can see it. And so, um, that, that, that vehicle isn't, so you take, sold. you take that out of the equation. That's right. Okay. Or if it's transferred to another, like a dealer trade, we can see that. So that net doesn't play into the equation. It's yeah. not, 100% perfect, but it's like 95%. And in the and when you're looking at um, a comp set and looking at it by uh, by those values, you can. And I'll show you once we jump in, you'll understand. But the, looking at those retail transactions um, makes a difference. So, like for instance, if I was talking to you, Herb, you were my customer, right? Uh, you came in and said, "I want to sell my car," and I said to you, "Why do you want to sell it?" And you said, "Well, I don't need it anymore." Cool. Um, what are you asking for it? 26K, great. Why do you think it's worth 26? Well, that's what I see them online for. And we go, cool. We go in, we do our research, bring it back and say, well, let me show you what they're leaving the internet for. Because we can actually show you then um, that what you're asking isn't necessarily accurate. And we can use data to our advantage. That's pretty dope, man. Like if you can tell them like, yeah, I mean, cause you list the car, but 
you know, there's there's time that car sits there. There's all kinds of price drops that happen and, and you know, before they actually transact on. So yeah, it um, might be how do you overcome that in the system here in a minute too? Yeah. What about well, how would you, what would you say to those that talk about the the valuations from the KBBs and the Carfax and all these that are you know customer comes especially now customer comes in right now and they want all the money. Yeah. So so double edged sword. KBB traditionally gives a very low value um, because they back it and so their algorithm is often low and so that's why the conversion on KBB ICOs is usually low, but it gives us an opportunity. The, the nice thing they're doing for us is it gives us an to opportunity step up. to step up and say, hey, Mr. Right. Customer, that wasn't our offer. That was their offer, but let us show you where we could come in at. Um, so that that's pretty good. The, the, the other conversation about um, uh, consumers coming, you know, with a puppy chest and saying, hey, I want 30 grand for my car because where are you going to find one? Uh, also can work to your advantage if it's if it's honest and you can just say you're actually right um, the car business is really good right now and it is a seller's market so you're going to get more for your vehicle let's take a look at it and here's where we use history and so i'll show you that too so within vinq i can see as long as it's 2015 or newer at this point i can see every car dealership and every auction any vehicle has ever been through and every price that it's ever had on it so I can see if that if that customer bought it two years ago at this dealership, I can see what they paid for it. I can break down what their average cost of ownership was and say, you know what, you paid thirty grand for it. You're about to get uh, twenty two or sorry twenty six grand for it. Driving it for two years uh, uh, for fifteen hundred bucks a, a year, that's pretty darn cheap. And let me show you the retail transactions and what they're leaving for. Your car, by the way, needs X Y Z, um, uh, and we'd still like to make some profit. Uh, and then we look at competitors because we, we know what others would offer for it. We One of the things we uh, we have a slogan that we will pay up to 250 more than CarMax, but really it's 250 more than um, uh, CarMax, Carvana, Vroom, and so forth. We just did it the other day on a Cadillac that is in my inventory now, I'll show you. Um, but the other thing we did a campaign on is um, uh, free second opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I like that. Uh, come on out. Uh, we'll give you a free second opinion. Very cool. So, bottom line in this market, have you bought more cars? Have you been more successful at buying cars, or has the the customer thinking that their car is worth all the money? No, way more successful. Are. We've been buying like crazy, and and I'm not alone, right? We have um, we have a lot of dealers uh, um, using our platform and doing the same thing, and they are buying. A lot of vehicles. Um, I'll, I can I can share some uh, some fun facts about a couple that have let me as well. Right on. So, all right, folks, if you're tuning if you're tuning into this on the on the app, we are we're getting to that place where we're going to switch gears here and we're going to do a live demo. So make sure to go to my YouTube page and and check this out. I really feel like you're going to get tons of value from this deal. Um, you guys know I don't. I'm never for or or against anything. Come to your own conclusions. That's why I like to do these so that you can see them and determine if it's something that's right for you. But I think there's some value here, and I think this is something that you guys are going to want to check out. So go right now to my YouTube page and check the second half of this of the session. All right, folks. So um, this is it. Uh, you know, tune in. This is going to be really, really, really educational. Um, so Danny, take it over. Cool. So um, let me start with with this here. So uh, VinQ we, was born out of a need to bring together a number of solutions that we felt were like essentially disparate, uh, disparate. So I was a Viato client for like 11 years. I, I got tired of looking at the same data and feeling like I was on a race to the bottom. And um, also I was paying HomeNet and StockWave plus uh, for my website. And uh, every one of those I had to have a separate login for. So VinQ was born out of that need to create an all-in-one solution so that inventory can work uh, together, meaning from the moment you buy it, it goes into inventory management. That's where we work towards what we call the highest authentic value. So give it all the correct options, features, packages, uh, use uh, Monroney labels within the system to make sure everything's correct and then look at market pricing and make sure that the comps you're looking at aren't just the most, 
but the most accurate. That's really important because I remember my guys just like changing prices or the cost to market percent to market because they thought that they were trying to be competitive and hopefully find a bargain shopper. But in the meantime, here we are losing gross, right? So the market uh, pricing and then auction sourcing is in here because we, it gives us the avenue to be able to see what we can either sell any piece of inventory out to the auction or, or buy or get um, uh, do research, right? My website, countryhill.com, among many others in the country, is, is a VinQ website. Um, it's a one-to-one, -one, so you can change your price. It changes immediately. Change any uh, of the uh, uh, options, features, packages, changes immediately, plus a lot more opportunity to uh, share highest authentic values, so dealer-exclusive items, um, reconditioning, uh, certification, things that you do right uh, from your own site. Boost is. Well, let me interject there really quick because that, that I I I think I missed this when we were doing the demo. Yeah. With you guys, so I, it, did I understand this correctly? So your website is tied to this, so there's no feeding through a, another company. It just goes straight from this to your website. So you make the changes; they happen automatically. Yes, you got it. Oh, dude, that's dope! I, I totally missed that. So you part of your your guys' solution includes building the website as well. Yes. Oh, very cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then Boost is VIN specific targeted advertising. Well, I'll share a little bit about that. It's easier to show you, but essentially when we're doing pricing decisions, we want more levers to pull other than just um, changing the price, right? So this gives us the ability to get eyeballs. So on a car that has a high market day supply, we know that it may sell at this price at 45 days, but we want to sell it in 15 days and it would take this many eyeballs to do it, then we can just spend the 50 or $100 instead of reducing it by 500. Then the last one <clears throat> and the one that I think has uh, just a, a lot of firepower is our vehicle buying center. So let me just, uh, let me jump in. We're looking at right now inventory management. Um, this is where we can see uh, any vehicle. Uh, and so for instance, this uh, uh, Acura RDX, uh, here's the VIN number. Uh, there's the original window sticker. We can jump into it and look at it. Then we can uh, come across here. We can see uh, my price age, my my age of my vehicle, my price, my uh, on it. I'm ranked one of three. My profit if I sell it at this price. My price to market, cost to market, um, and then uh, VDP views on that car and leads on that car. And then I can jump into any one of these, right? Uh, and uh, and manage them. And so let's just jump into one real fast. And we're on the inventory management side for a second before we get into BBC. But this screen right here, this RMV, um, our retail market value screen, is an important one. And so some uh, folks out there, I want to give a shout out to my friend Jason Rice, who owns Lot Pop. We work with Lot Pop and integrate. And so you can see Lot Score for those clients who have both solutions, integrates right into VinQ. So you can see if you're heavy or uh, or strong in a segment, uh, yeah, you can see all the relevant data that his performance managers trade on right here in the system. But um, 2018 Chevy Colorado, there's the original window sticker. I can click it, it opens right up, um, and I can see all the original features, packages, price, and so forth. We use this for syndication purposes too. I'll show you that in a second. But here's the comps. There's the books. Uh, we can see I've sold three. I have five. So my need's okay on this particular car. I can see that this car was a customer trade. That's how it came in. Um, I can bring in sold data. So when I bring that in, those green ones. Those okay. Yeah. Danny, I'm sorry. Let me let me interject on that one too, because that's that's a that's a pet peeve of mine with, with Viato. Like you have to like click all these boxes in order for that to to um but in order for you to have the correct information and i'm yeah. sure this is the same here right like the, the system isn't going to know that this is a you know a vehicle acquisition a trade or you know like you bought it from the street or whatever but how how do, how do you identify that what's that process because yeah let's say that i am using viato right and then i use this only for as my buying center how do i how, you know, do they talk to each other? Like, how do you make sure that that information translates or do you just have to do double the entries? No, you do not have to do double entries. So there's two, there's two ways to solve this. So A, it's captured in the appraisal. When you're doing the appraisal, um, we identify what it is. 
um, what the opportunity is. Is it a trade? Is it a, a street purchase, right? So if I click this, you can see these are all the opportunities. Service drive, auction, street purchase, site unseen, simulcast, lease return, dealer trade, demo, you can add. But you identify when you're doing it in the appraisal. And then when it, uh, when it merges the file from the DMS, it also can, so for us, we have uh, four numbers, one, two, three, four. One means auction, two means dealer trade, three means dealer network, and four means VBC. And so uh, when, the, when it's entered into the DMS, it can overwrite the file, so it's always up to date. And so that is what gives you the ability then to run those reports I was telling you about, sold inventory and or active inventory, and look at it by aging, look at it by uh, gross per copy, looking at it by even your salesperson or vehicle buying center person, productivity, all that is possible because we're tracking it. Does that make sense, Herb? Sorry, I was on mute there. Yeah, dude, I just wanted to, um, you know, uh, yeah. show that distinction. That's cool because, you know, like if you're going to use two, if you're going to use this system just to kind of kick it off as a buying center, as a, as a, I don't know if buying center, but an acquisition uh, program, it'd be cool to, you know, just to let people know that, hey, you know, it's not like you're going to be doing all this extra work. No, 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 no. We, it's all, it's all contained and we make it easy for sure. Um, in here well, also, we capture recon. So, uh, we can get into recon later, but this is all for the purposes of under, uh, attributing value to the vehicle also later. So like, for instance, if we do brake pads to it and we want to communicate that to the world, um, we can say new brakes value $379 and save that. It'll push it right to the, uh, um, uh, to the comments. So throughout here, uh, in, in this example, um, uh, we can look at wholesale transactions. There's a lot of stuff we can get into nitty gritty. Uh, but if you notice, there's all check marks here, right? And these check marks are so that we can create our own book values. Meaning if I see that this one, um, this one, and uh, this one are the most uh, accurate to my vehicle, then I can create my own auction report right there. And so, and as I change it, you can see these numbers change too. Uh, because the average of the vehicles I actually picked, I'm creating my own comp set. And so that is important because when you're looking at either a retail or wholesale comp set, you want to make sure that A, the computer does its the very best it can to create a comp set, but then you as the human needs to make sure because dealers aren't always putting their cars accurately online. And that's and that can that brings me to this, see this little poop emoji right here? So we, we sympathetically call that our shit list. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, if you find that there are dealers out there that are playing the game either wrong or there are cars uh, like an enterprise that you don't want in your comp set, you can put them on that list and it will remove that their inventory so they don't ever show up in your comp set. But uh, within here, we can, we can obviously adjust our filters. We can take out franchise independent national chains. We can include or exclude additional years and trim trim levels. We call it a trim matrix. So if you want to go a year back or a year forward, you can do that. Um, and then we can just jump into the all all the similars uh, uh, and and sort them. That's every price change that's ever been made on any one of these cars. Um, we can also uh, uh, let me just click a couple of these because I'm going to show you something here in a minute that's kind of cool. I click three cars that I picked and uh, then we'll go into sales. Sales is that uh, uh, retail sold transaction list I was telling you. So on this particular car, average leaves in 37 days, average price drop 1,230 bucks. Here's all the cars that have recently left at a car dealer's uh, website. And we can, again, you know, make a little list of them if we want. So I wanna uh, identify these three here. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And then um, uh, NHTSA, National Highway Traffic and Safety, TSBs and so forth. Uh, or I can go right to the auction, say, cool, at OVE, Mannheim, Odessa, Auction Edge, here's what's running. I can appraise proxy bid, jump into the sale, uh, bookmark, put in my shopping cart, and, and uh, um, uh, eventually buy these cars if I want to or use them as comparables. 
So then once I own the car, inventory management is just this one button. Now you're in inventory management. You have, uh, you can manage your description here. That is a whole topic we can talk about for SEO and SEM purposes, uh, the way we do it. All your photos are right here. And uh, notice there's a bunch of really cool uh, customizations you can do with uh, overlays. But we also do a, uh, a sale pending new arrival sold fast process. So if that car sells, we'll put a sale pending banner on it. And then on our website, that updates with that sale pending banner in 60 seconds. Um, and so that creates urgency for our customers. It also creates transparency. And we really like that. I'm going to put it back to that so my team doesn't think I'm crazy. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I like that feature. It's it's really cool. Thanks. So so a lot more to lot more to share there. Um, but as you're working, um, a lot of cool price changes. So I think the the thing that I really want to share with you is um, the vehicle buying center. But before I do. One of the learnings that we had was once you have a vehicle buying center, you can certainly play defense and just buy everything that comes at you. But at some point, you got to make the decision to play offense and go after inventory that you know will churn well and will bring a higher profit, right? So there's a couple ways to do that. You can go into your own sales history by class, price range, whatever, and you can sort by sold volume. And then you can open up any one of them and see your, your own sold log for as long as you want. And so then you can start making a targets list to kind of identify what vehicles and what segment and what brands and what price ranges sell well so that we can go and so we can go buy them, right? Demand then shows you in your primary market area, if we're in the same class, let's just sort by sold. And so it looks like Lincoln MKZs do well for me. I don't have any. I happen to have a Lexus and a Mercedes E-Class, but let's look at MKZs and I can open those up. Let's sort by highest sold. And it looks like 14s and 17s, there's nine of them available. And so I can go out to the auction or private um, and start uh, buying these cars. So wait a second, you said the auction. So obviously this is, a, this is not, I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little confused. So that's, that's, yeah, so this is, you can go out to the auction or private. We're going to get into the private right oh, here. Oh, okay. Yeah, All yeah, right, yeah. so there's, there's two. See, I missed that. I missed this too. I, I don't, did we cover that part? No, this is, this is, it's, okay. so, it's so hard to cover it all, right? Um, okay. But yeah, you can go out to, because we have all the auctions connected in here, but you can also then, this is what most guys are used to. They're used to using just like, here's what I've sold. Here's what I think the world needs. And I'm going to go out and find it at the auction. But now we give you the ability to do Look all at all at you, one in one place. You got it. Boom. Yeah. And so then cool. you can go and let's go out to the auction. So let's go to our vehicle buying center, our BBC. Just do a uh, um, customer to customer auction. I know, right? <laughs> you're, you're not kidding. So here's, so here's the private party sector. And if you can see that says CL for Craigslist, uh, CG, uh, Craig, uh, Car Gurus, AT, Auto Trader. Um, you have uh, uh, Facebook in here. And so these are all cars that you can begin now to search um, and identify. So like this Nissan Leaf is a two out of four star for me. Um, and, but I can click on it and I can uh, uh, set an appointment, reach out. So to wait, wait. Let's talk, let's talk about that rating again. So that's based on your the parameters of what, like what you whatever you set in the system as far as your your sell rate and all those things, or yeah. So it's it's really uh, four things, and let me explain. So when we're looking at um, what's going to do well for you, you can create your own targets. All right, you can also create your own no flies. So as you get better, you can say, you know what, I don't want to buy. Jags, anything older than a 2010. So put those on no flies. We'll filter those out. Um, on targets, we want um, Priuses in this price range or classes or whatever. That's one way to do it. The other ways to do it is we take into account what you've sold by time of year. And, and, um, and then, uh, so that earlier when I was showing you my sales, that's one of the things that plays into the insight. The second thing is the market demand what's leaving in your area 
um, uh, meaning cars coming in, cars coming out. And then, the, and then the last one is competitor data. So we can look at any competitor. So here's uh, somebody who's kind of my competitor. Um, and let's uh, bring him up. And, and Herb, if you let me, I can do this with one of your stores too. Um, but we look at their overview and we can see they're, they're number one out of 29 in, in used cars in the market and they're number 12 out of 29. And we can see how many used cars they've sold and whether they're up or down and new. And then let's go over to their sales log. Here's what they're That's selling. Awesome. Um, and here's the summary. Now the summary is important because we can look at by sales, what segment they're selling in. And we can also see who they're doing transfers to, right? So when I look at their used sold log, um, I can sort it, uh, and so there's those transfers I was telling you about. And yeah. um, I can also see what they have in inventory. So the inventory summary is nice because I can see their price uh, bucket strategy, or no strategy if they don't have one, they're just trying to stay alive right now, right? Um, and then they're used and new. And so if I wake up tomorrow morning and decide, hey, I wanna sell 10 more cars a month, I gotta either, I, I gotta either uh, spend more on marketing or I got to fill the need within my uh, my area, right? So if I know yeah. minivans are selling around twenty thousand dollars, and there's a bunch of them leaving the market, and I don't have any, what do I need to do? I got to go buy some twenty thousand dollar minivans. Makes right. sense. Yeah. Fill the need. M much more efficient than spending on marketing dollars. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 then let's okay. So here, let's just let's play that game for a second. I, I want to I want to buy. Uh, let's see if there's any Odysseys online right now. Well, how about that? Look at that. Here's all the Odysseys on um, online right now for sale. And uh, let's see. Hold on. Boom. There's one um, that excites me. It is a one owner clean Carfax 16 EXL with 48,000 miles. So let's take a look at it. So I can jump in and I can start chatting with the customer right here. Um, I can set an appointment. I can send that consumer an offer. Uh, I can also do a retail market value screen. Remember we did this earlier and, yeah. and see um, some, because I don't have a VIN number on this car because the customer didn't put one in, but I can get pretty close, right? So the first, and this brings up a good point. The first question I should ask this customer is, hey, I saw your minivan online, low miles for the year. I think it's awesome. Can you send me a VIN number so I can understand um, um, some more about it. That's a, that's a, that's a real conversation, not yep. hi, it's Danny country Hill. Is your car still available? Right. I want to buy your car. Yeah. So, so get the VIN number, pop that VIN number in and then begin to work the deal. Make sense. Yeah. Super dope. And you can send them the offer right through that, through right the through chat here. function. Over there. Yeah. Right, right through the chat. That's exactly right. Nice. And so we do the same thing through like the um, the ICOs. Let me open all of them up. So um, like here's a Sierra. So in, in this case, um, if we go over to the VVC offer, we can see that uh, KBB offered him twenty nine nine forty. So I'm sorry. Let me let me let me let me. Let me play devil's advocate really quick. Yeah, bring it. Um, even on the on third parties like the auto traders of the world and, and things of that nature, chatting really sometimes just isn't the most efficient, right? It takes forever sometimes for people to respond and stuff. Do you, do you guys see that you run into some of those issues and because of the volume, it doesn't matter, you just move on to the next one? Or like what, what would be your your approach to that? I love that you asked that question. So this was actually a big learning moment for us. So um, Herb, I don't know if you're going to hate me for asking you this, but how, how old are you? <laughs> oh, no, that's fine, dude. I'm 39, bro. Okay, so I'm 38. So we're about the same. So um, I'm kind, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of on that um, line where sometimes I like to text, but sometimes just call me, like, like stop texting me. Um, mm -hmm. My dad does not like to text. He's horrible at it. Um, <laughs> right? I have a 22-year-old sister who hates to be on the phone, loves to text. So the answer is 
ask. So when we started saying, um, hey, saw your car online, uh, is it better to text or call? Then we actually begin to communicate with the consumer the way they want to. We figured out that we were just assuming that they wanted to text and the people who hated texting like my dad would never respond or, or, or would get burned out because they're like, I just can't do this. Like, just freaking call me. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it totally does. But just, I, you know, that's, that's why I asked because you know, I'm assuming the first point of contact is chat, right? And then from there, you'd have to ask the customer, hey, how do you, like you said, how do you want to communicate? Um, so uh, yeah. for the people doing the demo, I just, I, I felt like that'd be a good question. To, yeah, to kind no, of that's understand. a good, that's, that's a really good point. Yeah, the first, the first point of connection is we send them a note, whether it be, and look, I have both, so I can email them or text them. That's the difference. I can I can start writing here. Um, boom, just like that. And if I click send, then it's going to go right to him. Email or chat or text. It is. Excuse me. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And so, and then, so we manage that whole offer, right? So, um, should we just do one real quick? Yeah. Let's let, and, and then, and then, um, I wanted to talk about that too. I wanted the customers to see the, the, cause you mentioned the five pathways, but it's cool. Like it's all there, man. Like think about this. Like if you're in your dealership right now, and I don't know if you're like most dealerships and you're probably a lot of this is relegated to the BDC. Um, which I, you know, obviously we just had a conversation about that. But if you had a dedicated buyer, imagine how easy it would be for them to just pop this open every day, look for the cars that they that they that you know obviously are of interest to, to your store, and then start having conversations and start engaging with people to buy their car. Like it's 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 great, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, can I show you my favorite screen? Yes, sir. This one. Oh, I love that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at that. Jeez. Isn't that fun? That's awesome. So um, that's the money screen. <laughs> Very cool. So let's let's just do one real quick. Let's do one together. So I'll um, um, let's go sell us a car. And uh, Herb, tell me a car. Um, Nope. Let's go with a 2021, no, 2017 Accord. Okay. And you can put a VIN number in here as well. EX, EXL, LX, which one? Uh, EX. So I'm going to put it, this as a test lead. Actually, um, I'm going to put my last name so the guys know that it's me. Uh, what's your cell phone number? Uh, or seven zero two seven zero two five two six zero nine zero zero. Cool. I'm always a test subject for these deals. Uh. <laughs> All right. So here's Bang. the offer. All right. So you should get it in uh, in your text in just a second. Uh, but hey, Herb, let's talk about your car. Tracy's going to call you. We can offer you between sixteen one and seventeen six for your car. Uh, you can trade it for between seventeen six and nineteen, or you could sell it on your own for between eighteen and nineteen five. So here's how we get the the data. Uh, All right, I just want to show show folks. So uh, can you see that? There it is. Yep. Text received. So click, do me a favor, click, see the link in that text? Uh, click yeah. on the link for me. I'm clicking it. And then let me see what you see. Oh, right on, it's right there. Boom, okay, scroll down a little bit. I wanna see if there's something there special. Um, does it say increase your offer on there? Option, we buy it, what's the right road? If you scroll up to the top, towards the top. What's the bottom line, value trade? Uh, let's talk about your Honda Accord. I don't see it, man. Okay, no, that's fine. So we just released a new feature that we're adding where you uh, you as a consumer 
uh, can click a button and it turns your camera into a VIN scanner. You can go scan your own VIN, take a couple pictures of your car, and it appends all that data right to the file. That's the beginnings of a digital acquisition. I love this. I, so I wanted to, I, okay, so that, you know, it'd be, it'd be super dope if we can see that. But um, I love this here. And I wanted to get your take on, on this screen in particular, what you guys are seeing there right now, because as I've, you know, so I used to work for Cox Automotive, so I used to sell KBB ICO and all these things. And obviously at that, at the time, just the offer, the hard offer was, was what we were pitching to dealers. Hey, it's a guaranteed offer. We write a check. If you don't want the car, give it to us. We'll, we'll cut you a check, blah, 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 all that stuff. As time has progressed, I've become more and more a believer in the range versus a set price. What's your, obviously you, you guys must have the same philosophy or maybe it's because of, you know, KBB offers a check versus this is a, I don't know. I mean, like what's your, why did you guys decide to go with the range versus just a hard, you know, this is what your vehicle's worth. Two reasons. Um, so number one is that you actually have a choice. So if we go back into VinQ for a second and we go into our dealer settings, and if you look here in the buying center specifically, you can set, the dealer can set all their own uh, parameters. So you can set how high or low you want the reconditioning to take, take part in the uh, offer, how big or small the margin is. You can uh, choose how wide or narrow you want that offer range to be. Um, you can obviously set your sales tax rate. But they, you can also use cost to market as a percentage for the, for the low number and the high number. And then you can do what's called VVC margin projection. So on a car that's maybe $10,000 retail, you can say, I'm cool with making $1,500 profit versus on a car that's 60 grand, I want to make five grand profit. And so then the offers will all land differently based on um, how you set up your business plan. And then beyond that, all of those offers, all these numbers are market-based, not book-based. So they're all uh, live today. And so, and I'll show you um, where that's coming from. So when we get into one of these appraisals, um, here is a, let's open up this, uh, Let's see here. How about the Sportage? So we'll go and open the offer. And when we scroll down, we can see what the consumer was offered. And then as the, if you remember and on your phone, Herb, this was where your offer ended, right? You couldn't scroll down any past this. Well, for the VBC, right. agent, VBC agent, we give them all the data that actually uh, fills this sheet out. So if you look down here, the live market comparables are all here. You can sort them by age, odometer, whatever you want. Um, then the sold retail transactions are here and the auction transactions are here. So you can then go in and um, pull comps either for yourself to make a good decision or for the consumer um, when having a meaningful conversation. Wow, dude, I really like that part because, I mean, imagine calling this customer up after the fact or let's say that they don't transact or whatever, and then you have all that information available to you. Um, that's just a much, much better follow-up. So, like that so, so that's the answer is why we, we give you both options to do either a range or, or a direct number, direct buy. And, and also keep in mind, this is the first pencil, right? So you can, right. you can go in and in the appraisal itself, when you open the RMV, uh, you've got all the data here, but check this out. Um, I can go in and I can uh, uh, change the offer. So if I wanna offer them, and this was an expensive car, let me go back to the other one that we were on, this one right here. So, um, in this case, it says, sorry, we're already sold it. So apparently we were, we were too late, Everett. Um, but if I wanted to change this offer and I can say, you know what? Um, because look, the ACV is 15.5. So, and that was our top end. So maybe 15.5 um, is our low end and, oops, and 16,000 is our high end. Um, I can save this and then I can now 
send this uh, new offer to the consumer with a note that said, hey, we sweeten the deal or whatever. And then up here, I'm not gonna send it because this, this is a live consumer, but up here we would save every offer that's ever been sent. So you could always go back in time. And then, and then this is the thing that I didn't talk about earlier. Once, once you acquire, like once you click that acquired button, this vehicle actually, this is what's beautiful about having an all-in-one system. Um, it goes into your inventory and then publishes. Boom. Uh, as quickly as that. Yep. So watch here. Wow. I'll show you. So it goes into right here. See this acquired bucket? I have 79 cars sitting in there. Uh, I yeah, but you would need to have the, your website attached to this in order for that to be the experience, right? I just want to make that distinction so that people kind of. Let's, yeah, kind of, let's talk about it. Hold on a second. So otherwise you have to what? Wait 24 hours, right? But right. even then though, what happens is the car goes into acquired and then you can manage it, whatever. Then it goes into hold. Hold is, uh, and this is our process. You can customize this. Hold for us is um, service. And so I can see everything sitting in service. And then uh, NFR, not frontline ready is, as uh, merchandising and then it goes to the lot but if i want to grab any one of these and push it directly to online before it's ever hit the dms i can do that and yeah. and push it live now yeah if you have a vinq site it's instant or if you have a third-party site then it's as it's as quickly as they'll receive the feed from us well i guess that's another question too so if you if you have this and you don't have the site, you can still syndicate to the website? We syndicate, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Okay. Totally, yeah. totally. I mean, it makes sense. You have all the inventory there, but I just, I wanted to, you know, ask that. Yeah, totally. So that's, that's the, um, that is the whole point for sure. So I wanted to show you, remember I, earlier I told you about history? So here's a 2018 uh, Dodge Journey that I have. On any of these cars, you can go into the history tab. That's every price change we've ever made. But then look at this. This is the previous dealer it was at in 2018 and what they had it listed for online. And before that, uh, the dealer that sold it brand new and what they had it listed online for. Wow. I like that too. I like the, the, the dude, that's really valuable for, for you. You can see the history of that car. I'm, I'm that has price fluctuation too, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, I was yeah, yeah. here. They dropped it. They raised it. Yeah. That's, that's cool. So, um, so yeah, really to kind of wrap up, unless you have other questions, uh, in the vehicle buying center, those service lane, oh, excuse me, those swim lanes I was telling you about is you got inbound, um, third party outbound, uh, service, uh, obviously appointments and then trades falls into this deals working tab. This is so, where all the trades fall. Let's talk about the service one really quick. Um, now it's not a, it's not a mining tool, right? It's just about the cars that are in your service lane and that have appointments for that day. And then you can, um, set offers for those vehicles, um, as they're there, right? Yeah. So you could, it's as simple as making a service hang tag with a QR code that says, um, uh, uh, we'd like to make you an offer on your car scan, scan here and they scan it. It takes them to the sell to page. They put in their information and they get an offer and then they can either say I'm interested or I'm not interested. And if they're interested, it alerts somebody in the vehicle buying center and they, they make a phone call, uh, or a text message, right? If they're not interested, we leave them alone. And the culture is always know what your vehicle is worth. Um, and we, we, we help them kind of stay ahead of that, that values curve. Um, and, and then if they decide to trade and then we incentivize that. So the, um, the, the service managers get, uh, paid when a consumer converts to either sell or trade. And then obviously we do the same thing in our vehicle buying center. Right on. Very cool. All right, sir. Is there is there more that we are going to look at? Uh, there's always more, but I think this is uh, this is uh, a, hopefully a really good start. Um, good play, uh, yeah. uh, right on. Igniting some heads. No, I love it, dude. This is great, man. Thank you so much for for taking the time to show that to us. I'm, I'm you know, like I said, I wanted people to see it. I think that that I mean, it's one thing to talk about it, but there's really you know, like actually seeing the demo, like. It, Hopefully it triggers people enough curiosity to reach out to you guys and, and you know, take that a step further because I really feel like there's a lot of good information there and I'm super glad to be able to share that here on the show with everybody.
Thanks, Herb. This is um, awesome. Yeah, I mean, this is becoming probably the longest podcast in or our, our, our longest episode in, in our in our <laughs> in our history. <laughs> it's fine. Um, all right. So there is one question that I ask everybody that comes onto the show. So we're going to get to that in a second. But before I do that, really quick, tell us how we can get in touch with you. Tell us, you know, um, what what are the next steps? Uh, how can we how can we reach out? Uh, Vinq.com. If you want to schedule a demo, uh, Danny at dealerq.com um, is my email, danny at dealerq.com. So pretty easy. It's C-U-E, like the line, uh, but vinq.com is the website. And uh, I love to help people scale. So if you're just stuck or trying to figure out how to get from 30 acquisitions to 50 or 50 to 100 or 100 to 200, whatever it is, uh, even those, I love those conversations because they, they certainly challenge me to grow. Uh, but uh, yeah, just email me. All right, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot, and we're gonna put that theory to the test. So yeah. hopefully, you don't you know you don't hate me, but do it. Um, you know I asked you this question when we were doing the demo just on the business side, but I feel like it's a fair question. So let's 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 put it out there. Every tool has a deficiency, right? Every tool has room for improvement. What is your your place that you're like, man? We gotta get this. If we get this to that next level, then this will be that much better for dealers. To your point, it would help dealers, you know, reach their their objectives better. Yeah, so here's my dream. Um, I want to be able to know what the right path is for each car, right? And there's a lot of players in the game. There's um, ACV and Backlot and Auction Edge and Odessa and Mannheim and all these different players. And um, from a dealer's perspective, I want to, when I look at a piece of inventory, I want to know what's the path that is going to produce the best result for that car, because then I can scale. That's the journey we're on. Um, we've solved, I think, about 30% of that puzzle, but I also think we're one of the first to really think about it that way. Um, mm -hmm. It's not about running faster. It's about running smarter. And so uh, we're on that journey. So there's, we have a ways to go. That's where we're deficient. We haven't solved that, but that's a problem that we created. Right on. No, I agree. That's uh, that's super cool, man. Thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. There is one question that I ask any, everybody that comes on the show, and that question is, where do you see the automotive industry headed in the next five years and why? I see uh, uh, a frictionless uh, uh, automotive industry is my answer. Um, and, I see, and, I, and right now, it's being defined by those dealers who are creating a frictionless experience, both on acquisition uh, and on sales. That's uh, that's where I see it coming. Right on. There it is. Short and sweet to the point. Danny, thanks again for doing this. I really appreciate it, folks. Thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for checking this out. Please reach out to Danny. Reach out to these folks over at BenQ. Do a demo again. We're not for or against anything. Come to your own conclusions. I really feel like this is something that um, you're definitely going to get a lot of value from. So make sure to check, check these folks out. That's all the time we have for today. And as usual, we'll talk later. We only host the well respected. The vendor Lexus Nexus. We don't sell digital marketing. What you do? We inspect it with our DT vendor management solutions. We come in like the EPA to clear out the pollution. Shake the trash. Go out. keep your PL clean. Your inventory. Now more than ever, businesses need more efficient sales. That's why thousands of dealerships trust Four Eyes to help with things like automated inventory email updates and ensuring all of your leads get into the CRM. To try Four Eyes for free, visit foureyes.io slash dealertalk. That's foureyes.io slash dealertalk.